is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. It's life in football. We are life in football. Welcome to the Life in Football Podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike Fee. And this your coach, Colin Moore. You know we love in life and enjoying football. Top notch coaches all around the world. Top, top notch coaches all around the world. We got a special coach on today who coaching at a special program. And the program is named Jacksonville State University. The, the game called JSU, baby, in the OBC. Now, this coach goes by the name of J.R. Sadler, and he's a top-notch coach, but he got some great experience coming from all over. He's currently the executive head coach and tight end coach and recruiting coordinator. Now, y'all see all them titles I just had to put together? Just imagine all the work he has to do. And he got experience at Notre Dame, got experience at Central Florida, got experience at American Christian Academy. And the great thing about it, y'all, if y'all haven't seen Jacksonville State University facilities, go check them out. Beautiful stadium, nice turf field. I'm talking about locker room, clean, weight room. And y'all need to know, it ain't just all about the D1 program y'all see on TV because guess what? Jacksonville State, they can go beat some of them teams right now. Y'all don't forget that they almost beat Florida State earlier this year. They play North Dakota State teams of that caliber, and they run toe-to-toe with them every, every time they play them. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let Simo bring them on. How you doing, Coach? How we doing, guys? Y'all doing all right today? Yes, sir. It's a blessing to have you on. I appreciate y'all reach out and spend some time with you guys. Now, Coach, I want to get right to it. What actually, because I seen you was a um, tight end at UCL. So when did you know that coaching was something that you truly want to do and be a part of? You know, coaching is always, you know, my dad was a coach. Uh, he was actually Bear Bryant's strength coach at the University of Alabama. Uh, Frank Thomas, who was one of the head football coaches at Alabama, uh, who coached Bear Bryant, was my great, great uncle. Um, obviously, I didn't know him, but, you know, probably in high, probably a little bit in high school, I actually was the powder puff head football coach for our high school senior team. Uh, and that was a fun time. But, you know, I was, I was a little kid, and I remember just growing up in Tuscaloosa, always wearing my little red blazer to church, thinking I was Gene Stallings walking up the sidelines in the front yard, just imagining. But probably really in, in, in college where I, I think at the end of the day, you got to your, – your experiences create what you really want to become in this life. And naturally, if you want to have change in this life, you have to become the change that you want to see. And uh, I believe uh, through college that really – uh, sparked my heart to enter the field of of coaching because at the end of the day it's about what you can give to people not just what you can take from people and I think a lot of times all throughout the world I think a lot of people focus on what they can get from someone instead of what they can do for someone and I just kind of look at it where's the other perspective where hey a legacy is left in what what you can do for people um because you need other people to tell that story. And it's not necessarily your story, but maybe it's the story of kindness. Maybe it's the story of provision. Maybe it's the story of gratitude, whatever that is. So that's kind of what sparked my interest to really get into coaching because, you know, really Billy Graham said what? A coach will impact more people in one year than most people in a lifetime. However, he didn't say what that impact was. And in my opinion, uh, just dealing with humans in general, some some. Some of those impacts are what? Positive. Some of those impacts are negative. And if we want to be the change we want to see in this world, then we have to be the change we want to see. I like that, Coach. You Look, Coach, you actually made me wish I was a player where you could coach me and I could get all this wisdom and knowledge that you're giving out because you laying it out right then and there. And and I can tell right now, and wish every, everything I've seen about you that I can tell you love the players, you care about it. Thing good like 
how did that how did that get into you where that was just a part of your being and that's how you coach them like because sometimes you can see where coaches just it seemed like it's just about the x's and the o's not all the time but sometimes but with you i see it's like you give out great information to any and every player in the country whether it's they come to y'all or not, and the parents as well. Like, how did you get to that point? I think it's about creating what. What is what do you want out of everyone? You know, if you have a family, if you have a business, you have an organization, what do you want? You want people to have great what? Have people with great enthusiasm, effort. Well, that's what you want from them. Well, then you have to ask the question, what are you willing to give? And the only way to get that from people and from the human heart is to give them an experience that they love, that they're passionate about, they're excited about each and every day. And I really think about it two ways. Number one, what are the, what are the two greatest gifts ever given to us in life? I would say salvation is the first greatest gift because that takes care of eternal security, eternal life, eternal um, everlasting love through Jesus. And the next one is fellowship through, through the Bible and, and getting to know him. So I think those are the first two greatest gifts ever given to us. But what are the two greatest gifts we can give other people? I would say the first one's prayer. I mean, prayer goes where I cannot. So that's one of the things I love, you know, even with my players and other players and, and guys that come in when we do our Bible studies or they just want to talk. You know, one thing I do is prayer. I might not know their situation. I might not know their circumstance, but God does. And he can go where I cannot. And he's way more powerful than I and number two is time, just spending that time with people. Because I think about this. I mean, everyone's humans, everyone. And what do we all want? We all want to be seen. We all want to be heard. We all want to know we matter. And we all have a place in this world. And I think that's what you have to do as not just a coach, but as a person where you tell people, I see you, I hear you. You matter to me by the actions you show. And more importantly, you create an experience where they have a place. And I think those are so monumental keys to the success that you could have for someone because the greatest success you can have in this life is what others and seeing them have success. Coach. Now those were some key points that you just laid out and that what you were just talking about is completely life and football. You gotta be, you want everybody want to be seen, heard, and then everybody want to have a chance to success. Give us your background story a, a little bit about how you grew up, how your parents were, was growing up, and just some information that people may not know. Sure, right away. Um, you know, I grew up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That was where I was born. I'm the oldest of three boys. Um, we all played football. We all grew up playing sports. Really didn't have a lot of hobbies other than working and, and doing sports. And if I wasn't doing sports, I was working at my dad's business in the warehouse, maybe doing lawn care, doing maintenance on the baseball fields that we had. Cause we were a big baseball family, believe it or not growing up. Um, but love my little brothers. I mean, it's, uh, it was obviously Thanksgiving's coming up. So it'll be a great time at the table and, and laugh the camaraderie, the fellowship, but you know, I played, uh, I was in uh, Tuscaloosa and they split the schools when I was there. We had one big mega school in Tuscaloosa and Central High School, and then they split it and they created three schools. But then I went to Northridge, played two years there, and then went to University of Central Florida uh, on a full scholarship. I uh, went through the whole recruiting process and you know, I actually got hurt. Uh, I played my first year. I was a redshirt freshman. Then I got hurt my second year at UCF, and I dislocated my patella. My kneecap went a whole 180 and went to the other side of my leg, and it really never recovered from that and got medical from this and then started actually working in the football recruiting office. Well, I actually started in the football rec uh, compliance office initially, and then I transitioned to the football recruiting office because you're still on scholarship, and you still have to be on – um, you still have to be doing your hours if you're on a medical scholarship. And I'm transitioned to the um, to the uh, to the football recruiting office. Um, when I was there, I got to do my practicum through the sports and fitness degree I was at, and got to be the offensive coordinator at ACA when I was still in uh, still in um, college. And that was great because both my little brothers were on the team. So my young my youngest brother was a quarterback. My middle brother was a defensive lineman. He signed with Western Michigan, and then uh, so that was an awesome. I mean, you just talking about the camaraderie and just uh, just special memories, special memories. You know, all those moments build incredible memories. And but from uh, UCF, I actually left when I graduated from UCF. I met our head football coach now, John Gross. He was at Oxford High School, and I basically took everything I learned in recruiting at UCF and turned it into promotion. So you probably know guys like Quan Alexander, 
Bobby McCain and Trey Elston. He, uh, you know, but obviously Quan's probably but Quan and Bobby are two of the ones that are still in the NFL to today. I mean, Quan just got picked up by the Saints, but he was a sophomore at the time. Bobby was a junior, so I basically took everything I knew in recruiting and turned it in, flipped it and turned it into promotion where it did what? Help the kids, help the recruits. So a lot of the information now that I tweet and, and send out is based off a lot of the stuff that I've known in the recruiting office. And it turns into what? Promotion. Because if in recruiting, I'm trying to attract you, then you as a player, you have to do what? Promote, right? So it's just uh-huh. advertisement because really what are the, when you think about the four cores of recruiting, it's all identifying. I got to identify. I got to evaluate. I have to market and I have to customer service. Well, really, those four cores are no different than the four cores of what sales. Uh, but from uh, from Oxford, I actually was there for one semester in 09. I left there, went to the University of Alabama, where I was a recruiting GA for two years. Uh, then I was a recruiting intern my final year there. So I was at Alabama 2010, 11 and 12, and really got a great grasp on recruiting, being there with Coach Saban and the back-to-back national championships. And just what a blessing. I mean, God's hand's been truly on this career, and I can't thank can't thank him anymore. I mean, my goodness, he just continues to amaze me. And, um, but then from there, I went to the University of Tennessee, where I was a director of recruiting. Butch Jones hired me there. I was there for about four months before going to University of Notre Dame um, and being in the recruiting office there for the 2013 season. Uh, and then when Coach Gross uh, got the head job here at Jacksonville State, and like I said, he was at, he was at Oxford when I first met him. I always kept in touch with him. When he got the job here, I made a promise to him a long time ago when I was at Oxford, wherever he's at, and he got a college job, I'd look where I'm at to come come help him. And, you know, we've done a great job here at JSU since 2014. We've had 61 wins, five conference championships, three conference academic championships, five playoff appearances, um, a national championship appearance, uh, 91 all-conference players, 36 All-Americans. So it's been – you just see this just – you just cannot – I'm not going to boast about anything I've done. As you can clearly see, God's hand's been on it. Coach, I, I love that story. And I always, you know, get inspired. And it always is a good thing to hear, you know, the, the background history and the information that anybody has, you know, had to endure in that journey. Now, right. Coach, I, I, I love what Jacksonville State always had going on. I always enjoyed it. Me and my co Simo actually had a time where, you know, he had experience. He played for a little bit at Jacksonville State, and I played against Jacksonville State at Alabama really? State. Right, right. So I just want to know, like, what's in the background that y'all do so special, man? Because for some reason, Jacksonville State is always a team that's willing to fight and overcome adversity for us, whoever they play, whether the biggest teams or – you know, the biggest teams in the conference, they, they always have a good chance at winning or having a very successful season. Right. Well, I think it all starts with finding talent. I mean, first, well, let me re-say that. you got to identify talent, which is obviously finding, but then you got to sign that talent. But you got to really think about, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, these plays are great, schemes are great, but you got to have what players. But it's not just finding players who have the athletic ability. I think that's the first thing you're looking for, clearly. When you watch film, you can watch an individual and say, oh, he has the ability that you need for the job. It's no different than trying to hire an employee. Do they have the ability for the job? Yes or no? Do they have the athletic ability? Uh, and then here, you know, in football, we'd say, yes, this individual do- does. So then you go to the next part, and you're like, does he, even though he has the ability, does he have the brains? Does he have the knowledge? Does he have those attributes? Because those are the first, you know, those are, to me, those are the first two. And through conversation, once you see this individual has what you're looking for, and through conversation, you see that they do. Um, those are the first two major steps. But then it goes into, I think, really getting to know the individual because you can have all the ability in the world. You can have all the knowledge in the world. Let's ask that next question. Do you have the willingness to work? Because there's a lot of people that have a lot of potential, but don't have the willingness to work. And that's who, that's who they are. Because we all know that slothfulness is one of the seven deadly sins, which is laziness, keeps us what? Comfortable. And we, we as humans like to be comfortable, but we got to find those individuals that have that, that have that character, that have that desire, that wants to work. But that's also the, that's the third. So I think we're 75% right now. The next one I think is the key though, in finding individuals that have this, and you really got to ask great questions literally talk to the heart to see if 
they have this because you want what you want people to have great heart. And that's what humility for the program saying, you know what? I care that the game is going to win more than I'm going to win. And I think that is asking great questions through the recruiting process. When you finally get to know these individuals, for example, if I ask the question, what is character? Well, it's not my definition. It's their definition. And I get to hear what they have to say and I get to hold them accountable to what they say. For example, let's ask another one. What is a teammate? Well, it's their definition. They're the human being giving me their definition. And all I'm going to do as a coach is do what? Follow up, follow through, and hold you accountable to what you said because it's your word from your heart. And I take it right out of the verse, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that's kind of where you where you come with when you're trying to find visuals. So to answer your question, I think it all starts with finding talent and signing talent, developing, developing that talent, talent and making sure you're doing a great job of placing that talent um, in the right positions to have the most success for what the program so it can produce great fruits. Coach, I enjoy having you on today. I'm going to go ahead and open up the flow to you to give you an opportunity to, you know, give the people in the football, life and football fans a little information on why they should probably pay attention to Jacksonville State a little more. Or if a parent thinking about, hey, that might be an opportunity for my kid to play football, you know, at a place like that. So go ahead. The floor now is yours. No, you know, obviously with Jacksonville State, I think we have a great community. It's a smaller community or a rule, so it's a tight niche here at Jacksonville state uh the slogan is the friendliest campus in the south and you can really see that because the classroom size are about 16 to 1 and you're really not getting in that where when i was at ucf when i'd have 30 to 1 in the classroom you have 16 to 1 and again if you can know the person you're going to have a totally different what relationship with that person you might have a lot better rapport with that individual leading to what a better response and getting you the results that you want. So I think the camaraderie and having that tight knit group. And I think having people at the end of the day, it's not about the logo. It's about the people that represent the logo. Cause you're never going to get mad at what the logo, it doesn't even have a heartbeat. You're never going to get mad at the facilities. It doesn't have a heartbeat, but the people in the facilities, the, the, the people that represent the logo do. And at the end of the day, we get upset and frustrated with what people naturally. And I think it's about finding that right fit. I think that's what we provide here. I think we try to get to know our guys on a personal level and try to build that relationship and actually know what's going on and know their concerns and knowing their heart and knowing what we can do together because we're always stronger together as a unit. I um, mean, you think about take a hand and you got, if I tried to punch you with little fingers, it wouldn't work. But when I close that hand and we're all together connected, we're a fist and it makes it so much stronger. So, you know, we, we have a, Great university here. I think we have have provided. I mean, this is going on year. We just finished year seven. We're going to be entering year eight, um, starting in in January with head football coach Coach Ross here. Just done an outstanding job. I mean, at the end of the day, at the very heart of him, it's about a ministry uh, and pouring back into those kids because you get more when you give. More, like, I, like I've said earlier, and and I think that's ultimately what it's about. Knowing those, having that rapport, building those close bonds, and and doing everything you can create an incredible experience for the individual because it's all about serving, honoring, respecting you because what you're only going to go through college one time. Hopefully we do a great job building experience where it builds incredible moments that build those positive memories that last a lifetime. Y'all heard it, man. That was coach J.R. Sandlin and he's the recruiting coordinator. And I know this year been a difficult year for all football players. So, if y'all got some film or you may want to just have a chance at playing college football, let me be the first to say that Jacksonville State University game call. Hey, if I had a chance, I sure go put on a jersey called Burgo Snow Field in that stadium. Going to be rocking every year. And I'm going to tell y'all yeah. one thing. Y'all keep – Hey, y'all got to keep an eye on the OVC conference. That's a big-time conference. We all know about the SEC, ACC. Oh, okay, that's fine. But I'm telling you, that OVC, they got some big-time players in there. But I'm going to go ahead and leave y'all like I always leave y'all. Keep your head up and not down. Now, yes, you'll fall to the ground. This is the Life and Football Podcast. Catch you next time. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. 
This is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football It's life in football We are life in football